Les Miserables, Chapter 12, in the Paris sewer. The inn doors were bolted. The men were inside. They would finish the fight from there. The soldiers were climbing the barricade. I lifted Marius on my back. There was so little time. But how could we get away? The streets were blocked at every turn. Soldiers were posted on every street. Only a bird could fly from this trap. I ran down the alley where earlier I had taken Javert. Years ago I had run from him with Cosette. Now I was running again. That time I had found a way to escape by going up. I couldn't do that this time. I looked on the ground. If only the earth would open up and swallow us. At any moment a soldier would think to check this alley. We would be caught and killed. My eyes searched everywhere for a way out. Then I saw it, the iron grate at the edge of the road. It was half hidden by paving stones. I laid Marius on the ground. The grate was about two feet square. It was just big enough for me to crawl down and pull Marius through. Soon Marius and I were underground. I replaced the grate. In seconds we had gone from midday to midnight. The clamor of battle was now a mumble above our heads. We were in the Paris sewer. The channel was narrow. I could touch both walls at the same time. The floor was wet under my feet. A foul stench hung in the air. Slowly my eyes got used to the dark. We were under the heart of the city. There were two passages in front of me. One passage would lead to the country. The other would lead toward the Seine River and death. There was light to the left, but I chose the right, the darkest part of the sewer. It went uphill and, I hoped, away from the city. Marius's arms were around my neck. His feet dragged behind. I held both his arms with one hand, using my other hand to follow the wall. Yesterday's rain lay in the center of the channel. I stayed close to the wall so I wasn't in water. I walked slowly, like a creature of the night. I walked knowing where... I walked knowing there were pits in the sewer and we could be swallowed up at any moment. I walked knowing each step could be my last. Questions raced through my mind. Would I find a way out, way out in time? Would Marius bleed to death? Would I wander the sewer until I starved to death? I couldn't stop the questions. Then the ground changed. We were walking downhill now. The stream washed around the heels of my shoes, not just the toes. Perhaps we were heading toward the Seine. If this were true, we would be washed into the river and drowned. The danger was great, but the danger behind us was greater, so I walked on. Marius's cheek pressed against mine. His breathing was faint. We finally came to the end of the, sh of the channel. There was a grate above my head. I put Marius down and looked through his pockets. I found a slip of paper in his wallet. Marius had written, My name is Marius Pontmercy. My body is to be taken to the house of my grandfather, Monsieur Gilles Normand. The address followed. Now I knew where I would take Marius once I removed the grate. I could see the early evening sky through the iron bars. But this grate was different from the other one. It was bolted. Only a key would open it. We had come to a dead end. I was exhausted. I didn't have the strength to turn back. And Marius was near death. Suddenly I felt a hand on my shoulder. We'll go halves, said a low voice. I turned. It was Thenardier. He didn't recognize me. I stood in the shadows, and there was blood on my face. How are you going to get out? Tenardier went on. You have no way of unlocking the grate, but you've got to get away from here. That's true, I replied. So we'll go halves, he said. How do you mean? You've killed a man, Tenardier pointed at Marius. I don't know you, but I'm ready to help you. I have the key. Give me half of what you found on this dead man's body. Then I'll unlock the grate for you. I couldn't believe it. Escape was in the hands of the wicked Thenardier. My good angel wore an evil disguise. 
I'll give you this rope, he continued. You can tie a stone to it and drown the body in the river. So let's settle up. Here's the key. Where's the money? I had 30 francs in my waistcoat pocket. It was nothing. I spread the coins on a ledge wall. Oh, you didn't kill for much, said Thenardier. Then he searched Marius's pockets. It's true, he said. There is no more money. I guess you better get out. It's like a fare. You pay when you leave. You've paid so you can leave. He laughed. Then he bent to help me put Marius on my back. He put the key to the bolt. The bolt slid back and the grate opened without a sound. I walked into the cool night air. Thenardier bolted the gate behind me. At last, I was outside. I laid Marius on the nearby riverbank. The darkness, stench, and horror were behind me. I was washing my hands and face in the river when I sensed someone standing behind me. I turned. The tall man behind me wore a long coat. He held a policeman's stick in one hand. In the half-light, I saw who it was.